Welcome to Electra Online. Now we're going to assume that the large mass of the star or the sun is not much, much greater than the mass of the planet. So if we assume that the mass is much greater, right here in this condition, then we can assume that the large mass is stationary and the small mass, the planet, goes around that stationary star, stationary sun. But if it's not the case, and of course in real life that's not really the case, even though the sun is much, much greater than the Earth or any of the other planets in the solar system, there is some effect in such a way that actually the planets do not revolve around the sun or the center of the sun, but they, they revolve around what we call the Berry Center, like this. And so the small planet goes around the Berry Center, but so does the large object, the star. So the star actually also makes small little circles or small little ovals. Uh, typically it's also elliptical in, in nature, in such a way that there's a center mass here where both objects revolve around. And you can see then that there's a vector that goes from the Berry Center to the large object, R1, and a vector, and of course I should draw a little arrow right here. And then we have a vector that goes from the Berry Center to the small object. Notice that again in the case where the large object is much, much greater than the small object, we can assume that R1 goes to zero, that the large object is at the Berry Center, and the small object just goes around that stationary large object. But typically we have more of a case like this, where the large object, the Sun, goes around the Berry Center, and the small object goes around the Berry Center as well, so that they both go around a common point, the Berry Center or the center mass, rather than around the large object. So we're going to start developing our equations using that concept. So that's why we, we're dealing with what we call arbitrary masses, where one is not much larger than the other. So when that happens, we then realize we have another vector called the position vector, which indicates the position of the small object relative to the large object, the position of the planet relative to the sun. And you can see then that that would be equal to R2 minus R1, since R1 is pointing in the opposite direction. When we, when we subtract R1, essentially that turns it around. That gives us a total distance from there to there and the direction from the large object to the small object as they both go around the Berry Center. Also, we then realize that the magnitude of that position vector is equal to the sum of the magnitudes of R1 and R2. Now, we want to put that into a coordinate system. And since the Berry Center is essentially a stationary point in space, it makes a lot of sense to put the origin of our coordinate system right at the Berry Center. So that's typically what we like to do. It simplifies the system. It simplifies the calculations we're going to do. And we call that the Berry Center system. So typically, we put the origin right there, so that we see that the R1 and R2 are done position vectors to the large object and the small object with respect to the Berry Center, and then S is then the position vector from the large object to the small object. And so we're going to be using that system to come up with a new set of equations that will help us understand the relative motion of the two objects. So typically, in real circumstances, we do see that all the time. And of course, that's one of the ways in which we can detect planets without detecting them directly. We can detect the presence of the small objects, which we can't see with a telescope, due to that small motion of the large object, the star, that it revolves around. And that's how we already detected thousands of exoplanets using that concept and that system. So of course, we realize that in virtually every real system, R1 is not zero, it's detectable, and that's how we detect those exoplanets. So we'll go ahead and use that concept in the following videos to come, and we'll see how that's then being used. <laughs> you're, not, you're not impressed. The moon and Earth doesn't do that. Oh, the moon and Earth do do that as well, because the Earth is in mass, let's see, the Earth is about 80 times the mass of the moon, and so, is it 80 times? Yes, it's about 80 times. And so, yeah, we have that very same thing. It turns out that the bare center of the Earth-Moon system is actually inside the Earth, but some distance away from the center, so that the Earth actually, in essence, goes around like this. So the path around the Sun is kind of like snakes around like that because of the orbit of the Moon. So it it's does like have that effect. Maximum or minimum mass difference? So... <laughs> so what's the, uh, in essence, the, the limit at which we no longer care about uh, the, uh, 
the difference in the masses. Well, let's see here. We know that the sun is about 300,000 times the mass of the earth. So from a large distance out, it would be difficult to detect the presence of the earth due to the motion of the sun. More likely, you'll detect the motion of the sun due to the presence of Jupiter, which is a much larger planet. So you can see that motion due to Jupiter much more so than the motion due to the Earth. Even though Jupiter is that much further? Jupiter is five times as far, but then Jupiter has a mass that's about 300 times the mass of the Earth. So yeah, it does make a, yeah, make a difference. Jupiter, it's not gaseous. It's, gaseous. it's gaseous, but it has a lot of mass. It's got a lot of gas, so it does make a difference. It turns out that if you could actually detect it all nine well, I still like to call Pluto a planet. All eight planets. Say that yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to have a book that didn't even have Pluto in it because it wasn't discovered yet. <laughs> anyway, um, it turns out that if you could very carefully detect motion of the sun, you should be able to see the wobble of the sun due to the all eight planets being present. What about the entire galaxy? Nah, that's, that would be too difficult. So. <laughs>